Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, where we discuss all sorts of things Germanic heathenry related. My name is Jesse. I'm your host. Let's get into it. All right, folks, we are back again on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Going to be bringing you another guest this week, a return guest, my good friend Patrick Walsh. Uh, We're going to be talking today about experiencing change. We're actually going to be listening to uh, a supporter, a listener of this podcast who called in last week and um, started talking a bit about some things happening in their life that inciting that that is inciting change for them i thought it was really interesting timing of it uh for us to get into this topic because you know we just we just transitioned from that uh autumn equinox uh last week you know so we're 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 leaning more now into the the dormant months you know things are going to start shutting down but it is a time of change a time of transition this whole year i think thus far has been a really um powerful focus on change you know there's a lot of things that have happened in people's lives that i know my own life personally and just you know the climate uh the way the world is you know what the landscape is like a lot of you know a lot of uh consistent change is what the word i was looking for consistent um, so we're going to get Patrick on here, um, talk a bit about that and <clears throat> uh, Miraketti's most recent release, Eskermila, uh, which was a great song. I did a review on that also last week. So if you hadn't yet checked it out, please do so. Um, but before we get any further, you know, all the housekeeping stuff, get out of the way. Uh, be sure to like this video, follow this podcast, uh, check the description for the Linktree, uh, uh, Linktree link. Um, so it's in the description show notes area. Make sure you check it out. Follow along with what I do on all of my socials. If you want to support the podcast monetarily, you can do so in a number of ways. You can buy merchandise. You can become a patron on Patreon. Um, you know, a bunch of things. So check the link tree link. Also, if you want to send a gift, there's the Amazon wish list. I mean, there's all kinds of ways that you can show your support here. Um, and any which way that you want to is greatly appreciated. So thank you so much for doing all of that. Uh, lastly, as another reminder, uh, coming up here next month, the Shadow Moot event in Springfield, Tennessee, uh, hosted by Raven Moonhearth, is vast, fastly approaching, quickly approaching. Will be uh, three days for games and ritual and classes and vendors and all kinds of fun stuff, feasting. Um, so it's forty-five dollars for the whole weekend. It's a Friday, Saturday into Sunday sort of thing. Very primitive camping, uh, primitive camping style event. You know, so you're going to have to bring a tent, bring all of the things that you would bring on a camping trip. Um, primitive camping, right? So there's not uh, there's not access to electricity. There's not you know access to bathrooms. There's a Porta Porta John, whatever they call those things now, um, on the property, but primitive camping. So you know, come and dress accordingly. Uh, but if you're just coming for one day, the day pass is twenty dollars, um, and there are no advanced tickets, um, at least not this year. So if you're planning on coming, if you know if you're going to be there all weekend, uh, you, you just pay upon entry. Um, but the one day pass is twenty dollars, and I would encourage if you think of uh, yourself doing that instead of spending the whole weekend that you um come on saturday the 14th because that's when all of the good stuff is happening all of the event games and uh, classes and the ritual is is going to be on saturday so of all the days if you're going to come just for one day we can you know we would recommend that you come uh, on on that saturday um and if you don't want to camp uh or you don't have the means to camp i know springfield and and neighboring areas of that area you know have hotels airbnb you know um so you got that to consider too um you can come and go 
right? So if you end up getting a hotel or Airbnb because you want to spend all three days there, but you don't want to really do the primitive camping thing, you can explore what options you have there in, in Springfield or somewhere nearby. So uh, check that out. The event page will be linked in the description show notes as well. It is a Facebook event page. But for those of you who do not have Facebook or don't use it, um, there you go. Information is there. Um, the address will be linked down there as well. Um, in case you're just catching this on the audio podcast and you didn't see the address on your screen. So all that information will be linked in the show notes in the description area. So without further ado, let's go ahead and welcome back to the podcast this week, Patrick Walsh. Let's talk about, uh, let's talk about, uh, yeah, just experiencing change and embracing change. Let's get into it. All right, folks, welcome back to the show, Patrick, and welcome back to the show, everybody. Happy to be here. How was your week, man? You know what? It was more towards the last couple of days that really stood out and really hit home. You know, just getting out into the elements and uh, making the uh, adventures and the uh, trips that I've had to honor the um, the autumn equinox and just mm -hmm. getting praise and, you know, honor right. to some really cool people, really good, you know, holidays and everything in general just you know feeling pretty good besides the shitty work week that's good it's nice to have things to offset that work balance you know the life work balance you know it's it's, counterbalance that you know? yeah yeah well we've definitely been feeling a lot more it's been it's been definitely feeling a lot more like autumn should feel especially at night and in the mornings so i'm glad for that too man same here I, how are you been doing though it. how's your week it's been all right, you know, kind of the same thing. Um, by the time this airs, right, we'll already have been like a week past the 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 autumnal equinox. But got a chance to spend an afternoon last week with friends and and other people in the area, other pagans, other heathens. Uh, kind of had like a potluck thing going on. Remember that um, when you first when you came out and visited last year, remember the park that we were gonna have. Our thing at yeah those reserves already yeah 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 so that's where we all hung out um last week for the maven oh, thing yeah only available <laughs> well it was only only it was it was only available because um one of the people got there at like 6 30 in the morning and basically sat there all day until the rest of us got there around two in the afternoon so they basically were like, nobody, you know, nobody's going to claim this area. This is our area today. So big shout out to them for, for doing that. But yeah, other than that, no, it's been, you know, pretty, pretty good. Um, I had most of last week kind of here to myself several days. I, actually, while we're recording this right now, I still have got the, the place to myself um, for the next couple of days. So nice. Yeah. Yeah. Not too bad. Free time is always liberating, but also equal parts. Like, you know, you don't know what to do with yourself. They're like, okay. It's like when my uh, my dad and his girlfriend went on vacation to Florida last week or the week before. It was really liberating, cool, but at the same time, like, damn. Yeah. I'm super lonely right now. Like, <laughs> but right. it was cool, though. It was refreshing. Yeah. It's nice, I think, sometimes just to get to get a chance to ourselves, you know? exactly so but yeah um we're gonna we're gonna be talking about things regarding change today aren't we that was the kind of the plan um and also you had uh you had wanted to talk a bit about the uh, a music release that just came out from one of one of the high lung members right yep. mira mira yeah, mira. Is it mira ketty or just mira i mean like mira ketty is like the project but i don't no. I always said Mira Setti, but I feel like your pronunciation is oh. more, more Mira Ketti. Okay. So don't Maybe. call me anyone who's watching this who knows the proper enunciations from that. But um, yes, Mira's newest um, music video, I mean, you and I, we share a very mutual understanding and appreciation for all the work she's done, she's done so far. And like we talked in person about this, not in person, but you know, via messenger chats but um 
we probably played this song more times than we were sure to count. And that's um, a tall tale sign that you stumble across something very special, very meaningful to really, you know, provide something you need to see and hear. Mm -hmm. What did you think of it? I mean, the, don't question. Uh, the video was absolutely <laughs> incredible. I mean, yeah. Any of the videos she makes or any songs that she creates along with her companions, because, you know, there's more than just one person going on, obviously. But um, right. Just the time and sacrifice she's made to come this far is absolutely outstanding. And, you know, knowing she comes from high among adds significance to it, but not to discredit that, but also her being herself, you know, it's just, I'm so proud of her. And, you know, mm -hmm. I briefly saw her last year in Chicago and then really talked to her in depth. I hope to this year, but, you know, be that as it may, though, you know, Anytime I hear her music and watch her videos, I'm just taken away from all the hardships, all the problems and things that I'm facing. I'm brought to a place to really appreciate the sacred, mm -hmm. to appreciate, you know, just the expression that we all face and go through at various stages in our lives. And you made an excellent video that I just finished minutes ago. And you probably did the best reaction video I can even imagine. Now, I haven't seen any other reaction videos, but any others, it's just the, you know, nothing is meaningful, but just, you know, yeah. your insight really complimented how I felt. Well, thank you. I caught it, like, when I, when, I, when I saw my YouTube notification go off that, you know, the song was out now, I'm like pause everything you know like let me let me check this out and see and um uh like i immediately was like well i know what i'm gonna be listening to now for a while <laughs> yeah. you know and i'd heard the song already because um the the ep or the album that that song is on along with uriat right is uh it's i think it's part of that same album you know so like the theme they kept really true or she did right like but everybody a part of it kept really true to the theme uh the visual theme that uriat's uh video had like the music video for that song very similar uh theatrics and and imagery and yeah yeah not quite the same you know of course because i think the um the message yeah the message was different you know the obviously the song's different but uh that was yeah. that was like one of the things like had you heard that song prior to the video or no yes i have um, okay i actually um when her first uh video area was premiered i quickly sought out her discography on uh Bandcamp. Mm -hmm. i highly recommend anyone you especially if they haven't already check out Bandcamp. And Bandcamp in general is just an amazing app, and they experiment with various platforms, be it Facebook, Instagram, Bandcamp, YouTube. Bandcamp is pretty solid. You know, you have some... What I like about Bandcamp is, like, you know, you could hear an album a couple times, and you are left with a choice. You could buy it or just not replay it. Now, that mm -hmm. may not be the same for every album you listen to, but as far as High Long, Song of Night Here, and then uh, Mira Setis and Fumidane and a few other artists, you know, you can listen to it a couple of times, but eventually you're, you know, left with that choice again. I mentioned, you know, to buy it. And yeah, Mira's uh, album that she released a while back ago, I couldn't help but buy it. You know, it was just right. great work. And to see this up, this recent video that she uploaded and shared with all of us, like it's just, I'm very happy the way it turned out but even more so excited for any future videos that she may or may not be releasing mm -hmm. so far though she's making excellent progress and just again everything she's doing to make this possible I mean, there's nothing but credit and kudos for what she's done so far yeah and i don't know if you knew this too but like with Bandcamp specifically i think it's every friday there's what they call Bandcamp fridays and a hundred percent of the money that you spend on the on Bandcamp goes to the artist right 
instead of the platform taking a percentage, which is standard, you know, pretty much everywhere. Wow. Certain pl platforms take a higher percentage of a cut for having your, your stuff on their platform. But I think it's Fridays, they call it Bandcamp Friday. So if you were to like buy an album on a Friday off of Bandcamp, whatever you pay for that album is 100% going to the artist at that point. I instead didn't of know percentage that. Of so it. Mm -hmm. I'll definitely be keeping that in mind, the future purchases and all that, you know? Maybe. Yeah. But I did too. I listened to it. I think it was on Spotify when I first came across the album and I listened to it um, pretty much like front to back for on repeat, you know, for like a whole afternoon. And uh, it's definitely a journey, you know, it definitely like if you close your eyes and kind of put, you know, let your mind's eye envision things, you know, I wouldn't necessarily say like when you see a video, you know, you're going to and then hear the song later you're always going to, I think, go back to that visual experience. Whereas if you listen to the song before the music video gets released, or if there is no music video, you're more apt to allow that, that, that internal vision take you places. And it's such a, like I mentioned in my review of it, it's like, it's basic, not basic in a bad way, but simple. You know what I mean? Like there's nothing, there's no frills and bells and whistles or anything about the production of it it's it's raw and it's simple and it's beautiful for it being just that you know and it carries such a a powerful message you know and one that you mentioned also as well is uh, she doesn't have the following that she deserves in our humble opinions you know which again you know just... i know that's struggle that's a struggle too for a lot of artists you know and i hope that talking about it on on this platform and getting some conversation around it will help drive some people to check her out right and support her anyway. the hump that she's gonna get over you know having associations and um you know share company with high Lung, i think will do her a great advantage and spreading the message just like uh, alex pozo he has his own thing going on too as well something i'll be sharing with you shortly after this podcast but um yeah, a lot of the artists, as uh, Emily, too, on that note, um, she released an album. I'm not sure if I told you this in person, or uh, not in person, but uh, via chats, but um, she released mm. an amazing album that just was nothing short of amazing and incredible. And, you know, I really like that they do their own separate projects. Just like Maria and Christopher, they do a song rock here. Now, forgive me if I mispronounced that, but that's their original this is the group they do just to have fun and share what they share. High Long is very intent based, very purpose based, very, you know, very, we're doing this for a reason. Or as the other things that I can't speak on their behalf or anyone else's behalf, but you know, anything else is just, you know, experimenting and mm. getting to know their audience. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that there were that many different side projects. There are, yeah. That, that um, like, are the reason why high long is its thing you know like everybody is doing kind of their own thing but then they come together and create this wonderful you know theatrical and ritual experience for the world i didn't know that yeah, share that foundation and appreciation for what they commit themselves to whether it be a daily practice or a weekly practice or what have you you know it's just knowing that they share that mutual friendship and love with each other that by all the more inspiring and you know super cool to you know observe and you know to see that yeah definitely um what was the what was the thing that stood out to you the most on mira's new song so it's called skirmila which i think we both discovered today or at least i did thanks to you it's a basque word or a phrase that means grateful or, or thanks um it's like giving thanks Eskermila. Uh, what was the most like what was the thing about that video yeah that that song or that video that really uh struck a nerve for you for me it's just like her previous uh, music video uriat again it's pronounced jason for all you typos out there um <laughs> but uh overall though just the entirety of her song and just the overall intent and message that's incorporated and embedded and seeded into what she sent and shared. And for me though, for me, it was just appreciation. And I didn't know until literally an hour ago or so 
to really understand the name of the song and have an appreciation for what it meant. I'm mm. happy to have seen it. It reciprocated and was on the same level as how I felt. It's like last night, I listened to it over 10 times. And that's being yeah. generous saying that. But I'm just, you know, it's just, Kirby's, yeah. it strikes a chord and it resonates with me for all the right reasons. It just makes me feel special and give thanks and appreciation for not only, you know, our path and what we're going through, but also just, you know, the amazing mystery and works that music does and why we follow who we follow and what we do, what we do. Yeah, that was one of the beautiful things about that. Um, you know, without knowing the language, without being able to speak it or understand it, you have to rely on what, like, the the, the message is, you know? Like, if it, if it speaks to you that way, you don't have to understand the language to feel that message come through. Exactly. I want yeah. to point out really quick here, um, I noticed we're having some audio feedback Oh, you got it coming up on your end, too? Did you hear it? Yeah, okay, yeah, I heard that, too. Okay. I'm not sure what that is. I'm not sure if it's, I have any notifications enabled right now, because I have notifications enabled for Messenger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not well, sure it's if okay. it's all or not. I mean, well, it, it's all right. I think, you know, people listening... It's, they are saying the overall... Is what it is. ...what we're doing. But, you know, in a perfect world, you know, we could have this without any shenanigans but you know here we are anyways continue please i'm sorry i just wanted to point that out though no yeah you're good man but um and also the timing of of when the song was released right right around the autumn equinox you know that period of time of the year when day and night are of equal lengths and then we see that 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 shift that waning or waxing or whatever the right terminology is where we start to think about the longer nights, shorter days, all of that stuff, and get ready for rest and get ready for re recovery. It is a period of time and it is a time of change, you know, and we have to, I think that was like another um, part of the episode today that we wanted to, to really touch on was, um, change and and what change can do uh for us and how difficult it can be you know experiencing change embracing change um and just how difficult or challenging it can be sometimes to to face that change you know all right we got patrick back here little little bit of technical difficulties but you know hey that's just how it goes sometimes you know worst case scenario is help himself this evening i said his name i i blame myself partly for that but um, just, <laughs> here we are here <laughs> roll go. with the punches right but yeah the uh anyway just kind of like recap real quick the 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 timing that mirrors song came out of the autumnal equinox change being a, a a big focus for a lot of us around this time of year, you know, we're we're moving into the times of year that are dormant. Things are starting to shut down and go into a rest stage, and and how that kind of a change or any kind of a change that we experience, you know, can be can be rough sometimes, you know, um, and embracing that change, right, and allowing that process to to do what it has to do for us and not not really fight it you know because i think some of us you know whenever things don't stay on the same course that we're used to and comfortable with any kind of change that comes that we don't incite ourselves it's like oh what is going on you know it's you know you try to fight it um well even more so when we come to approaching that transition that we expected to be easy street. Like, okay, I'm making the right choices now. No, it's not that simple. Making the right choices, the right step in the right direction. But it's more often than not a painful process for all the right reasons of the world. And that's something we have to bear in mind. We're making that transition and those changes in our lives. Mm. For me, for example, like I used to drink every freaking night. 
now it's periodic and I'm in the continuing path and to cut it back on my consumption and whatnot. But that's just an example or even more to that point is like when I um, was addicted to opiates and whatnot, you know, but that was more of a drastic and um, force change. So anyways, more to the point though, any yeah. change we make in our lives is not going to be pleasant, but it serves a very noble purpose. And that's something we have to bear in mind during that process that we face, you know, whether it be cutting a toxic friendship or, you know, changing our habits and our diet, you know, it's something that it's going to be really messed up for a long period of time, but we stick through it and stick to it. We'll find ourselves in a better place. Yeah. And not all change, you know, I mean, a lot of change is rough, you know what I mean? Especially when it comes to lifestyle changes or, you know, like you say, you know, severing ties, um, I actually talked a little bit about that on a, a live stream that I did. Um, well, at this point, uh, when this airs, it was, you know, last week. But la my last live stream, I was talking about, you know, when, like, r a relationship, you know. Um, if you, or in my case, when it was, uh, <clears throat> you know, somebody who I called my brother you know, and who called me their brother. And it was like, I fought tooth and nail to not, you know, cut that relationship out. I, I, I tried to preserve and save that to the bitter end. You know what I mean? And I had to be the one that's like, dude, I can't with you anymore. I can't, you know, it, it, this isn't working. This isn't, as long as you're doing X, I can't, I can't, you know, be with you. I can't talk with you. I can't be a part of anything in your life as long as you're doing these certain things. And man, that was one of the toughest things that I had to do because again, we had reached the point throughout our lives that we established a thing between us, you know, a, a brotherhood, a kinship between us. And then I go and I, you how know, long have you known this person, by the way? I just I had to ask. Uh, I mean, I'd say probably about, seven eight years i mean See, a little while you know i mean we we shared a ritual together we we've we've done a lot of meaningful things together i mean you know again it was like one of those things where i'm like that change was definitely not easy no. and not something i wanted to go through but i had to you know See, and I mentioned this a lot when talking about this topic and I hope I didn't cut you off by any, by any means, but, um, no, go ahead. something we, we face with really meaningful friendships, whether you have that friendship for like one year, six months, three years, five years, in my case, sometimes 15 years plus, you're bound to come across some humps in the road. You're going to come across some shenanigans, malarkey that you didn't expect. And for the most part, it's worked in our favor. Well, whether it be, you know, my friend and I, you know, we have times we disagree, don't see eye to eye or straight up. Yeah, that's normal. We just sever ties with each other. But then when time passes and the wounds have healed, for the most part, we pick up where we left off. And mm. that's a, a trademark for a really, truly meaningful friendship. And not like take a break, you mean like, hey, yeah. Get some space, right? Exactly. It's not, yeah, yeah. But there are going to be times that we're pushed to the limit. And mm. I'm not referring to anyone specifically right now, but there are people that come to mind when that regard comes. And again, this is not public shaming or anything, but just, you know. Well, it ties with the whole theme of the podcast. I mean, we're talking about things that are unpleasant, changes that happen that you don't want to have to happen, but they need to happen in order for to grow to grow to for ourselves but them as a person as well and yeah. that's the thing we i feel like we agree with in that regard is just you know it may be unpleasant you may have to cut ties for a while hopefully not permanently but you know it happens the way it happens you know and just again i've shared that experience too with other people as well who are not no longer part of my life and they offered great ties within my life Great, wonderful times I wouldn't trade the world for. Mm. But now, 
in a sense, we're both dead to each other. But that's the way it is, you know. I, I've had friends. Here's a really good example is um, friends from childhood. I wish the hell that I had some of the friends I had since grade school. That would be so meaningful and so special. But then there's a lot of things we have to take into consideration. That other person might have a family now. They have kids. Those are two huge freaking things. Those are when big changes. Yeah. Mix, when you have kids in the mix, all bets are off. You know what I mean? It's all about them. <laughs> And that's something I feel like most of us can appreciate and understand right. why that person not available. Now, on the opposite side of the spectrum, there are people who may have habits that are not doing well by them. And I've been in that situation too. So, so many factors and considerations to take into account, but also it's, I'm trying to get back on track of what we're talking about, but you know, transitions and stages that we're going through may not always be pleasant and more often not they're not but we have to roll the punches and do the best we can and not yeah. get too messed up over that yeah and if we fight that change uh, you know what are we really doing at that point right you you don't want to why why are you trying to fight against prevent, a raging current yeah why are you trying to prevent something that just needs to happen you know um, rip off the band-aid and rip it off. It's not yeah. healing. Take care of it. Right. You know, and then, you know, there's also things like you were talking about, like conscious change, you know, making decisions in our lives that make, you know, that, that, that are a change, whether it's, you know, how much of a substance we're consuming or the type of company that we're holding or whatever. It's like, right. You feel yeah. You feel so much better. Like it's gonna suck at first, right? Like we, yeah. Like those things are gonna be rough, and it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a shock to the system to now have to go on living or go on existing without this thing, that, or the other. But the reward overall for doing it is much better for doing it. Is if you know, in opposition, if you were to remain in that toxic relationship, or if you were to keep going just because, well, I don't want to just, you know, I don't want to rattle the cage is too bad you know yeah and i noticed that like watching that video from mira um you know the way she the character you know what i mean like when when she changes from this form of herself walking through the desert carrying this 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 treasure chest looking thing right this box with the with the with the idol or the or the little god piece or whatever and then changes and transforms into like a spirit self, like the embracing that, that spirituality that, or that spirit self. Um, it, it, it reminds me of like what we see in nature. A lot of times when you, uh, you know, animals shed their fur, they, they uh, molt their feathers, they shed their skin. They do these things that are a death in a way. And it's, it's a partial death and it's, a, and it's, but it's not, you're not gone. You're just transitioning. You're changing. And it's sometimes Into. painful, but again, what like what we're talking about uncovering is it's it's sometimes painful and unpleasant. Yeah. Ultimately, it serves a purpose. Deer do the same thing, right? When they um when they shed their antlers, when the bucks shed their antlers, like, and then look at like when they're growing their antlers too, right? That velvet that they uh, have on their on their antlers in the spring and summer. They have to get that off because it's itching them. I don't know if you, I don't know if you knew this, but like I when when they, when they shed velvet, when that velvet starts coming off, and they like have to shake their heads on trees and and rub against trees, it's a relief to them. But it, look at it, it's like a bloody mess. Uh, all that stuff coming off because it's it's there's blood vessels and stuff in there. So when it, when it starts to shed, it becomes really itchy, and they have to get it off. Otherwise, I mean, it, it's coming off anyway. So. <laughs> They got to do what they got to do. So we see these things happening in nature, and it looks grotesque. It looks just like, again, it looks like this fleshy, bloody thing hanging off of their off of their antlers. But after they shed their velvet and their their antlers and stuff are all uh, polished, look at the beauty that comes out of it. You know, you have this majestic, really nice looking set of, set of antlers on you. And that's uh, a wonderful correlation too is to really you know remind ourselves that we're very much part of nature and our earth and our mm -hmm. creatures that we share company with 
we're not so much different than we expect. You know, these creatures, you know, they have a one track mind. It's survival, reproduction, what have you. Yep. You know, we all share similar plights, <laughs> be it creature or human, you know. And that's something I really admire about this path as well, is to give honor and praise and above all attention and awareness to that to have that love and understanding and why we share the path that we do and to yeah. really make associations that are very fundamental to our growth and our personality as people and you know what we choose to do yeah yeah we can learn a lot from nature absolutely Especially um, with the seasons and going back to Mira's, you know, song, you know, it just it kind of hits out a lot of points on that that transitional period. Yeah, the timing of the release was perfect, and I'm sure she had that in mind, right? Like to release it at that time. And if she didn't, then it's super coincidental. But I feel like that was a <laughs> smart that move. Not coincidence. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I feel like that was a really smart move just to put something out like that at that time of year when we're, we're thinking along those lines, you know? Um, but I actually was going to um, have you listen with me. We had a, a call come in last week on the podcast, and since it's coming into the, 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 the topic of embracing change, this uh, person who called in is talking about a pretty drastic change um, themselves. So I'm going to start playing it. Um, and we're going to listen to it. This is, um, I'm not going to say names, right? Because I like to keep people's identity anonymous uh, for the most part. But we're going to call her, this is Sigan. Okay, so for anybody that's listened to the podcast in, in the past, uh, the, the, my episode on Sigan, Loki's wife, right? Um, I remember this one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So same person. Um, so they called back. Um, we're going to go ahead and play it. Nope, that's not it. This is it. Hold on. <laughs> She's got the right idea. <laughs> the writing thing. Uh, so I just listened to uh, the Wiring Pagan episode Thursday. Cannot today. And <clears throat> I thought I'd call again and ask a question and see an idea for a show. I had this. I had this. I've been having this thought basically for a while now. Um, and towards the end of this last episode, um, you guys were talking about a time when, like, there's going to be times when still, you know, right now um, I'm having one of those times, basically. I always feel full this time of year, and I feel a lot. I don't know how to explain it, but like fall and winter, that's like my time. <laughs> I'm Risp on a pause real quick. So she's referencing the last episode with that, you know, why are we pagans? The same the episode you and I did, um, why are we pagans, right? And she's talking about a, one section of that episode. Um, and I couldn't quite pick up exactly where, but this time of year, she's saying that she generally feels full and satiated you know what i mean um as a, as a, as a general rule right she feels like she's abundant there's you know no real lack of things um but as we're going to about to hear it a little bit more it's a little bit different ready i'm preparing prepared doing stuff staying busy i don't know maybe other people aren't like that that's the way i am it's also harvest time in my head but uh so uh I feel empty, really, really empty, and disconnected, and just all this, these feelings, um, and it's probably made worse by uh, my support group facilitator. She recently uh, asked me about my past, and, you know, I could tell that she, when, when I was telling her, you know, and she was confused, but she has like a snarkiness about her. And 
she was just really rude, disrespectful, confused, all of this. I could see it. I've seen it before. Um, but I never expected her to have this reaction to my my own personal past because, you know, she's a psychologist. She's a support group facilitator. She's an advocate. I just didn't know she was going to be so world-denying, I guess. Um, we have girls of all sorts of faith who come through the support group, and she was just absolutely disgusting with me. And that just hit me at the right time in my life, I guess. Um, yeah. But I've been feeling down in the dumps, and this lady who I guess I have placed on the pedestal has, I don't know. Anyway, not feeling too good. And I've been on this path for 18 years now, and it. We're going to get into the second one, but I'm going to pause there because the, the, the other half of the message is going to explain a little bit more. But just right off of the rip, man, you know, to, to open up to somebody, first of all, for, for them to ask and then to respond in such a way that's invalidating or not just invalidating but like make considerate yeah making you feel like shit for it like who the hell like especially someone of in that line of work in that profession like i'm sorry but how did you even get to where you are if you're that way to other well, people my, no goddamn idea um have you experienced anything like that have you seen anything like that because i mean my 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 initial knee jerk reaction is like get the hell out of there. <laughs> I hate to say this, but um, with the company that I work for right now, now the incident that occurred, I'll summarize this very quickly. But um, I have an employee that works for us. Um, that out of the blue grew some kind of vendetta against me. And to this day, I have no idea where it stemmed from, where the roots are. But one day, she just came in working very uncompliant, very, you know, rude and disrespectful. I'm like, okay, she's having a bad day. Whatever. But then, here's where the long story short comes into place. Um, she expressed her dissatisfaction and uh, hate towards me. Not dislike, but hate towards me. And then um, there was a conversation that was being had between my general manager and then should be assistant manager, but a co-manager. She's cool. That's the other manager. But um, mm -hmm. And then Rory. Rory, the employee, was listening to a conversation that my GM and my should be assistant were having. There's talk about that I was going to have some time off to see High Long in Chesterfield. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, she's listening to this conversation and she goes, I hope he dies. What? Yeah. My reaction, exactly. I'm like, where's this coming from? Wow. Why is this happening? But more to the point, though, now my cool manager, the should be assistant, She's like, she speaks on my behalf. Her and I, we've worked with each other for over um, four years. I appreciate her to death. She's a wonderful person, a wonderful human being. And we're friends off of work. But um, anyways, she goes, that's messed up. You shouldn't say stuff like that. You shouldn't wish death on anyone unless it's something rightly warranted. You know? Well, yeah, but also the fact that, I mean, like, that's a HR case in the making you know what I mean? Point, <laughs> what's the point, though? Here's what's messed up about my company right now. Again, I'm not going to make this a tangent as well as, well as I want to, but I'm... <laughs> anyways, yeah. my GM, her reaction during this exchange is like, she grinned. Not in a polite grin, but a messed up grin. Like, oh, I, I this is entertaining. And that was that. Mm -hmm. Nothing was said about it. But here's the messed up part. My should be assistant... I don't want to mention names to respect her privacy. I mentioned one right. name it's here or there, but, um, so my GM has a friend in the HR department. 
-hmm. So any issues with her. All right. That sucks. Sorry you're dealing with that. We don't care. It's basically what the vibe we're getting off of. But the fact that she didn't defend me like the other yeah. person did, my my friend. Yeah. It messed me up for a long time. And mm. I've gotten over it. And unfortunately, I'm in the time of year. And some of you might relate, but we're in that time of year right now. We can't afford to change jobs. Because we have certain obligations and holidays that are upcoming. We that would be a pretty family. catastrophic change. Exactly. You know? <laughs> we have, I have special trips, Jesse, you might know one of them, but I'll work both of them actually. But, um, right. I'm not in that position to root myself somewhere and follow yes. a company that could appreciate me for me. But also, I've been with this company for over six years now. About six years now. My um, anniversary happened a few weeks ago. But um, oh, again, congratulations! Thank you. I appreciate that. This company, for the most part, is great, and I've become very complacent and almost to a fault, where I don't really see my true worth anymore. But also, it's time to make that change. But now it's not that time. Mm. And I try my best to follow my intuition and follow my gut. I'm like, you know what? Let's get yeah, past all the holidays. And I know all, most of us are heathens and pagans or whatever path we choose to follow. But we know where we're coming from. We know where I'm coming from. It's during yeah. that, you have the Christmas. We have to take care of gifts and then making travel expenses to see our said relatives and whatnot. It's a whole big thing. So right, right now, it's the worst time, in my opinion, I'm, a lot, I'm sure a lot of you could agree, but the worst time to change jobs <laughs> is for this period. Yeah. So I like to have a stable set income, and that's what I'm relying on. But come, when New Year's comes around, oh, yeah, I'm excited to say one day, like, hey, I found a new job. But also at the same time, though. Freddy's, I work for Freddy's Frozen Custard and Steak Burgers. Anyone who's interested and curious to know where I work, I'm a manager. I, um, I started with the company right around the time of my um, peak of my addiction with opiates. And then I had a car accident and then changed my personality, my persona, my, my you know, overall, you know, work ethic and did the best I could. And then I got promoted to a crew trainer. And then a year after that, I became a manager. Now, when I became a manager, I'm sorry, I'm on a tangent now, but um, when I became a manager, I did not seek this position. It was offered to me. I'm like, yeah. okay, well, I'm going to seize this opportunity. I'm going to make the best of it. But now I'm at the point now, I'm like, okay, it was cool. It was good. It was great. It added some very necessary life lessons, but now it's time to, when approachable and proper, to change yeah i mean stuff like jobs i mean you know if you're looking to change a career i mean you got to be tactical about it um but with with something like this you know where clearly what sigan's talking about is a um a therapy uh, or you know um, session you know a, a, or group therapy right going to a place which should be a safe space for all the participants and going there and not feeling safe because you've been attacked by the person who you should feel the safest with, the facilitator, the psychologist, whatever, you know. And when opening up and talking about something personal, right, your religious or spiritual beliefs and practices, get made to feel as if you're silly or, or just disrespected over it. Um, I'm going to play the second half of it so we can hear more yeah, of the sorry, context. Sorry, sorry. Okay, I promise you I ain't sending you no 12 <laughs> uh, messages. I do respect your time, and thank you for listening. Uh, just real quick, Sigan, uh, it's no big deal. You can call and leave as many messages as you want that you feel you need to, or anybody for that matter, um, and I'll do my best to you know, trim them out, put them in, uh, keep the stuff that's relevant in here, but um, it's all good. Um, <laughs> so basically, this person... I respect a whole lot. I saw a different side of her, and it, I was already not feeling good. I was feeling kind of crazy, and now I'm just feeling even more crazy, I guess, because today is going to be my last day in the group. I am no longer going to be a pushover. I'm going to stand up for myself. 
myself, and I'm going to Good. just, you know, let her know. And it's not really for me. I, it would be for me if it was a little bit more accepting of um, other views. And I don't think that's healthy, so I'm just going to back out, and I'm going to just be nice and all that. And, well, it is what it is. So uh, I have never really talked to other people about what can you do when – I'm just going to pause real quick on that one because, you know, getting out of something like that where you don't feel accepted and say – I mean, again, in context, right, a place – like what she's describing, should absolutely be a place that you don't feel invalidated. I think that part of therapy can sometimes involve being challenged with yourself, right? Like I think part of, and I'm no expert, you know, so please, anybody listening, watching, you know, I, I don't claim to know anything about psychiatry, psychiatry, psychology or psychiatrist, you know, oh learning. God. But what I'm trying to say is, is that I think sometimes part of the healing process does include getting pretty visceral and, and, and putting up this challenge against ourselves, you know, and, and, and it's like you got to face this thing. I don't think that you should be feeling unsafe or that you shouldn't feel accepted in the process. I think it should be done delicately, um, carefully. Um, but, you know, you might not saying you specifically Sigan or anybody, but like just, you know, we might be kind of up in our own heads too much thinking that everything we're doing is, is the way it ought to be. And there might be things about what we're doing at any given point in time that are toxic and that we just, we need to, we need to be presented with that and we need to confront that and we need to, to see about the change. I don't think that this is a applicable. I don't think that what she's describing here is what's happened just from what little we know. Right. Oh. I think that she was just talking about what she believes in. And then this other person's like, you do what now? And then what? Anyway, I mentioned something really quick here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. please. Um, I'm not sure she's a part of my group. But I will let her know. I'm assuming she's watching. But um, mm -hmm. if you're not part of my mental health and awareness group, I'd love to have you here. I have some really great admins and moderate moderators part of my group. And I strive. And continue to to make my group a safe space. Now, it's arduous approving and disapproving members joining without as, answering the security questions, and whatnot. But also, I'm pretty liberal when people share posts or experiences, for the most part. But also, you know, more to uh, the meat and potatoes of that, though. You know, when you join my group and you're approved. Share what you will with the best of intentions and just be the person that you are. Now, I'm not ever going to be in a position to judge anyone on their their beliefs and what they choose to follow. You're part of the group and you agree to the rules and respect the message. You're more than welcome to share your replies, to your victories, and everything you have to offer. And that's what a group should be about. Not taking a personal stance in your ego to judge someone during their affliction or seeing something they observe that they don't approve of. Cause I've been in that position before. Like some people share stuff and like it's relatable, but I don't agree with, but I'm like, Hey, you know what? This might reach someone who needs to hear this or needs to see this. And that's why I generally, like I said, liberal about that kind of stuff, but that's really crappy what you're going through. And I'm sorry that you're going through that, but know that there are people. There yeah. are individuals who have your back. This guy, sorry, this guy over here. <laughs> I've been following him for a few years now, but uh, you're a great company. I'm very happy to have you part of this podcast and um, know that hey, you, you are supported. You are loved and appreciated. Thank you. I want to say, um, it's like um, in Christianity, I think that. they call it like a, a something of faith. You know, you're just, you're not feeling it. You know, you got questions. I'm not questioning. I, I'm for certain. I, you know, it, I, I'm not questioning my faith. I just feel so empty or so alone. I don't know what it is. So I, I'm guess I'm going to take this path to actively speak people, like my people. <laughs> um, 
So I've been thinking about that for a while. I think it's time I like turn to rip off the band aid and stop being so afraid. Uh, rip off the band aid. Yeah, that means. I have my reasons. <laughs> um, so yeah, what do you do? Because so far I've just been like grounding. You know, I walk ten miles a day. Sometimes I walk seven. I have been doing this with my <laughs> Not not all the time, but sometimes. It's, it, I can't explain to you the happiness I feel when I go running without shoes. I am a pure human being of planet Earth. I don't know how to explain it. That's you don't have Earth. to explain it. Um, I get it. That's what I got so far, but I can't, my, my legs are hurting. I don't, I'm kind of also just wanting to find healthier ways, um, to find happiness, I guess, or to not feel so alone. And it's your stress. I don't know. I feel crazy now. <laughs> so I'm nope. gonna go. Bye. <laughs> man, not oh man. Not crazy at all. Not crazy at all. More to the point, normal. We all feel this way and a lot of times, you know, the fact that she's brought to this point to question things, I think it's badass. I think it's really right. cool that she found herself in that position. Like, you know what? It was cool for a while, but now it's time to move on. And hey, yeah. serious kudos exactly. for that point. It's not easy. It's very daunting of a task to really challenge your expectations and to challenge the people or some people that surround you. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing crazy about that. I have nothing but respect and reverence for your position, but also support all the while. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so thank you, Sigan, for calling in and, and, and first of all, opening up, you know, and talking about something that is weighing heavy on you and, and raising a really good question. You know, she mentioned along the call there about, you know, what do you do? Uh, I think the, I think what you were maybe trying to, to refer to Sagan is crisis of faith. You're talking about Christians have this thing, some something of faith, maybe crisis of faith. Yeah. And I know you said you weren't questioning your faith. You, you're, you're, you're not in denial. You, you're, you're, you're sound and you're solid in your beliefs. But um, so I don't think that that, yeah, going to your people, right? You talk about leaving this group therapy that is kind of not doing anything good for you because of the attacks that you were, felt were made towards you and going back to talking with your people. And now you're, you're talking about feeling alone and trying to find ways to heal through this time where you should normally be feeling enriched and fulfilled. You know, you talk about going on barefoot runs and go, 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 go. Uh, this time of year, this, this transitional time of year is not about go, 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 go. We've already been going, going, going right now. We're in this transitional, this change, this time of year, that's about let's slow down, let's rest, let's store, let's re recharge, right? Let, let's let's rest. And I think um, you know, one of the one of the things that we are oftentimes we find ourselves doing is staying in that perpetual motion to heal, right? Well, I gotta be doing this, I gotta be doing that. Maybe you just need to stop pause rest regroup collect recharge you know get with your people be nurtured from your people right lean on your people let them alleviate some of those things and then because they know what you're going through right they know your beliefs they, they, there's that commonality there there's that like minded mindedness exactly don't forget forget the people forget the people pay more mind and appreciation not saying you haven't already but focus your attention on those you can count on the sure bets the people you know your people us right. and it's a great reference i'm just saying we are these two crazy fuckers here jesse and patrick <laughs> we fit in that position too and yeah. there's nothing wrong with the way you're feeling and again, I'm proud of you for coming this far and sharing your struggles and your plights. I've been in the same position too, you know? It's totally cool to feel that way. And it can be overwhelming. Please don't lose sight during those messed up times. Like, oh my God, all these people are against me. 
No. Not the case at all. Not the point at all. There are great people. Not only great people, but more importantly, or as important, great forces and great beings, be it the gods, our Lambertir, our Hospitier, those people mm. we come across at a grocery store that exchange a warm smile when you're having a rough day. Or people that just let you know. They're random. They're never people you know in person, but they just share a glance. And at that moment, you, you probably need it. Like, hey, you know what? It's not all messed up. There's hope. We can't lose sight of that hope. No matter how messed up things get, we need to ground ourselves. And again, to Mira's video, I feel like that's a sound basis of that. And giving thanks and also grounding ourselves to counting on what we can count on and give thanks and praise to what has gotten us this far. As well, struggles, mm -hmm. struggles are well and good, but the support and the, the, uh, the momentum that we carry through our daily practices and what we follow, what we choose to do is fundamental to continuing this, what we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought the, the, the video back up too, because I, I keep reflecting on what I saw when I watched that video, right? There were moments, I don't know if you caught during that video where when she's experiencing what she's experiencing, there are expressions on her face that really capture this essence of uh what do you call that like disorientation like where am i what's going on like and that happens when we transition that happens because we're moving into this next stage we're moving into a different awareness a, a different stage of our existence right and it's a shock to the system so you're going to be kind of disoriented it's going to be this like what the heck is going on here right and yeah sure like there may be a theme with the with the music video for, for specifically but I loved that, visually speaking, that's what was captured. The essence of when change happens, it's a shock to, to the system. You're going to be leaving this group, right? This group therapy, like you're going to be leaving it. You've been going to this for however long. And then next thing you know, you're not going to have that. And so maybe subconsciously, that's going to be something that bothers you or that you feel somehow empty because of. Maybe it just hasn't been enriching to you for this whole time. And maybe that's why you're feeling so empty. It's like, I'm going to this thing, but I'm not getting anything out of it. I don't know. I'm just point of awareness. home here. We can't. What's that? Lie. We're brought to a point of awareness that we didn't really foresee or expect. Yeah. The universe, I feel like, in a way for her, singing, you know, the universe is like, hey, you're not in the right place. Let's yeah. give you an example and the reason why to feel that way. And while that reason is painful, it's necessary. Again, sorry for interrupting. Yeah, no, no, no you're right. Because I, you know, and and always having this idea of of like I gotta, and there's 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 like so many uh, contrasts that you can think of, right? I've known people who um, feel empty, feel like they are not connected in a way because they aren't doing anything, because they're staying still, right? You 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 talk to those people or at least i have and you talk to those people and it's like well it's no wonder you feel malnourished because you're not engaging with anyone else to help nourish you you're not doing anything you're remaining stagnant and then here we have an example perhaps of somebody who is always going always on the go always trying to do things and it's the opposite Right. Well, maybe you need to pause. Maybe you need to stop. Maybe you need to slow down. Maybe you need to, yes, be grounded in your movement, but but stop for a minute. Establish some roots, right? Recharge, regroup. Don't Reset. don't be so caught up in that perpetual motion because, you know, uh, everything has a time. Everything has a place. Everything has a season. And this time of the year, this season, this transitional time of the year is not about rapid movement. It's not about all of that. It's about slowing down. It's about pausing and taking a rest and so maybe that's something to consider too right take into account what led us to this position for better and for worse you know we've made i feel like all of us make great strides and great accomplishments but at the same time we're still lingering on the things that could have been and what should have been but yeah right here that's neither here or there 
we are who we are right now. And sort of make the best of it. And make yes. best of ourselves. Yes. That's a that's the easy thing to fall victim to, right? Being caught up in the woulda, coulda, shoulda. I'll also referring to uh, comparing yourself to someone else's successes and hardships. That's a horrible mistake I made in my life, especially with my brother. You know, he he's a surgeon, and I'm just some random asshole who works as a manager at a fast food restaurant. That's my you know, and our dialogue speaking. But uh, you know, that doesn't matter. What matters is our actions and what we do. What's said, you know setbacks and victories you know it's what we do that matters not what we should have been or could have been be you and for the best reasons well the things that happened already i mean you know it's like you can go back and change it i mean it is no, what it is no, you, can't. you, you can't. know so you do what you do now to to be better for that and um i'm also kind of sensitive to something that i've seen a lot of people do and i've i think i talked about this um either on a live stream or in last the last podcast but the uh self-deprecation you know it's it's um you know and and patrick i know like i know you didn't mean anything by this but um you know i'm just some random asshole that works out of this that and the other no you're not you're awesome you know what i mean don't tell yourself things like that and i have to keep telling myself that, that too right but but the people listening the people watching you're you're you don't um your body yourself right you're who you are your your actual your true self doesn't know the difference between you talking shit about yourself versus anybody else talking shit about you it's negativity that's being fed to you whether it's from somebody else or whether it's from yourself and you're gonna react to that your, your system is going to react to that kind of energy regardless of where it comes from i think bruce lee said something along those lines right like don't talk shit about yourself because you don't your, yourself doesn't know the difference of where it comes from it doesn't know better it doesn't know better the, from a joke from actually a point of reference right you know and i get it like again the whole self-deprecation thing like i i'm i'm the first person in the world to make fun of myself to you know do all of those types of things because i you know it just is how, I, how i've been but i've but i've really gotten to reflect on that and try to change that with myself because again um what's what would be the difference of some if, if somebody else were to say those things to me i would i would react in a di much different way is it funny when, how that works though it is right it's crazy. <laughs> Well, fuck you too. I'm sorry. Forget you too. I'm yeah. sure it's, you know, yeah, speak no, right right now, but... yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know, like you 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 get on the defense when people say things about you that you, in the same breath, will turn around and say Agree about and ourselves. Disagree. <laughs> right? And it's like, yeah, I'm some asshole. No, you're not, man. And I wouldn't. I would never. First of all, if anybody were to call you some asshole, and I was in the same room with them. They'd have to deal with me too, because I'm like, look, man, you just look. You don't talk to my friend that way. You don't. Part of the, part of the dark screen here. I'm just venturing to find my work clothes here. Sorry. That's all good. Yeah, but if like if you're good. if you're talking and it's a joke, I mean, I guess you know. There's the whole like in the Norse, um, in 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 Norse uh, beliefs and stuff. You got flighting, which is basically like talking smack to one another, but in more of like a jest or or, or fun or games right sort of thing and um. So I, you know, but I don't know, man, like, I don't know. I think that if we're, if we're constantly or repeatedly bashing uh, ourselves, bash, yeah, then we're going to eventually get to a point where whether we want to or not, we're going to believe that it's become normal and we're going to be, we should not that. make normal. We should make yeah. appreciate ourselves more, you know, day to day, but this, yeah. that's in a perfect world. We live in a perfect world in a perfect society. And what's important though, again, Pardon my, you know, no, don't pardon that. I am who I am. See, here I am. During this very <laughs> live stream, I'm finding myself in that position too. And that's what something I find very beautiful about me, Jesse, and all my tribe members, high long and off high long topic. We all share the same place. We all. 
Well, Patrick just dropped. Give us a moment, folks. Take a break. We'll be right back. Hear a word from our sponsors. Um, listen to a song or something like that. And uh, we will back, We will be back here momentarily once Patrick comes back on. We'll be back here shortly. All right, folks, we are back. What's up, man? Hey, hey. back in the saddle again. <laughs> Technical things, man. But no, where we did leave off, uh, the self deprecation, you know, the joking, the you, and look, like I've talked to you about this stuff in the past, and and um, you're always ah, apologies for this. I'm like, first of all, stop that, <laughs> right? You got nothing to apologize for um and 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 but i get it right we we understand where we, we we come from when we say things like that we want to be respectful we want to indicate like hey you know this was an intentional la 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 um but man i just i want people to know that you know yeah sure there there are things about ourselves that we can 
change we can work on we can improve on um but like and and singing too right she's like i'm sounding crazy i'm like no no and you i think you even said too right like no not at all not crazy (laughs) right like let's let's let, let's stop that right there, you know. Right. Um, <laughs> let's put but the kibosh on that. That's what we do, though. We all find ourselves in those messed up predicaments. But, you know, we have those amazing people that, you know, hey, by the way, you're getting carried away here. So, uh, boop, boop, boop. Here you go. That's where you need to be. <laughs> well, it's that, I think it's that gentle nudge. It's that tough love sometimes if needed. But it's that, Let's get you back on course here, man. You know, let's get you back on track. You're you're kind of going off into the weeds here. You're 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 taking this a little in in, in a direction that's not going to be constructive for us, for you, for them, for right. And so, hey, let me reel you back in, right? I used to ride horses, and um, I know that sounds random, but I'm mentioning it for a specific reason. I used to I used to ride horses, and uh, one of the things about riding a horse, especially in like the natural landscape, like if you're going on a trail ride or something, is that um, their attention gets diverted pretty easily. You know, they'll get spooked by something, they'll hear something, they'll, and they're going to be like, oh, that, right? Well, guess what? I'm the writer. I'm the one controlling the show here. You got to listen to what I'm saying. So... In, in a similar sort of way, right, when, when we're with our people, when we're with the folks that know us, right, part of that responsibility that I feel we have to each other is to keep each other from going off the trail and chasing a rabbit. You know what I mean? Hey, get back. Oh, reel you back in. Let, hey, let's stay on stay on point here. Um, it's okay to go explore, but if we're going too far off into the weeds and, and, and it becomes too treacherous, like, before we get to that point, give ourselves a good yank back into the on you know into where we need to be here so so easy to fall into those snares too especially when you're having a bad day you can't help be consumed or not even a bad day just a bad encounter there might be something happening to you that just sticks to you like me personally i had something like that happen recently and i want to shake it off i want to just forget about it but then all the same part of myself is like yeah that was really crappy, but it served a purpose. Pleasant or not, you know, I wish every experience could be like Mira's newest, you know, video release or listening to some great friends, sound advice or spending time with about <sighs> spending time with birds of prey at a mm. run fair. I mean, that's something me personally, I'm still really back from i mean you know going back to the autumn equinox and appreciating what we have and you know give me space for special moments and the most important thing about those moments and those times we strive for it's never never forced it's something that's organic it happens when it needs to happen yeah you know we can't we can't Jesse, me and you, we've had this discussion multiple times, and it's a very worthy topic worth mentioning several times because we need that reminder. Hey, you know what? You might be getting carried away, or hey, you know what? Things are messed up right now, but there are some lights at the end of the tunnel. There are beacons of hope and are saying that, you know, hey, you know, you're you're going through a messed up time, but you're not lost. You're so very much present. Yeah, like those are lessons, right? They, they they can be, they can be shocking. They can be like those moments can really, we can we can become so absorbed in the moment that we lose sight of the bigger picture. It's easy to, to 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 have that happen. You know what I mean? Somebody like Sigan or, uh, or whoever. I'm mean, just you know, feeling like I'm so disconnected. I'm so empty. You know. What can I do? What do I do? I'm just going to keep running, man. I'm just going to keep moving. Because that's what you're so familiar with. That's what you're so in tune with. Like, that's just what I've been doing. So that's what I'm going to continue to do. Well, we're already talking now about you changing your 
uh, approach to the group that you're with and, and, and removing yourself from that. So that's a pretty drastic change. And now, you know, there's this talk of, well, what do I do to kind of help heal this feeling of emptiness that I have? And so now we're, we're entertaining ideas of instead of moving so much, give yourself a break and pause and stop, right? A lot of change, a lot of drastic transitional moments that, um, you know, again, quite honestly, if you're, if you're, if, if all you're absorbed is what's happening in the moment, you lose sight. It, it clouds your vision to see past what's right in front of you. It's kind of like, like, you know, you remember when you used to learn, like, you remember as a kid or teenager or whenever you learned how to drive? Yeah. You remember, you remember that? I remember one of the things that I was taught about driving is you don't look at the road in front of you like in front of your nose. You don't look at the road in front of your vehicle. You look past it. You look beyond it. You look ahead of it because you got to see everything. You got to see what's going on. You got to have that awareness of everything else that's going on, right? The rear view you know, or the front view. Yeah. You know, and I think we can we can take that lesson, we can take that analogy and apply it to stuff like this too. If all we're seeing is what's in front of us in the moment, we're blinded to the bigger picture. We're blinded to the path that's in front of us and where we're going because we're so focused and so enamored with what's happening right in front of our feet. And more often than not, though, we have that potential support that we often lose sight of. Like, oh, I'm so mm -hmm. lost. I'm so messed up. I'm so useless. No, 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 no. You may feel that way, but feelings not always a clear-cut indication of what you're actually going through. It's okay to feel the way you feel, but don't let it define you. And I hate saying that, too, because I am more often than not fall victim to that very same thing. It's just we need a reminder. Several reminders, honestly. We need all the reminders we can take, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know, and I, I mean, look, maybe, maybe in reality, because I like to, I like to look at the big picture, right? You know, maybe we are lost in that moment. Maybe we are off of the path. Maybe we found ourselves following this rabbit hole that we are having a hard time getting ourselves out of. And, uh, we need our we need our people that's where i go back to with heathenry especially like the tribe construct the tribal uh mentality right your people rely on you and you rely on your people if you're just out here skating along doing your own thing by yourself isolated right not really having it having a tribe having a group having a collective to go back to then yeah, absolutely, you will get lost. And then it's good luck, Charlie, you know? Hope you find your way back. And if you don't, oh well. But if you have that group, if you have that tribe, you have that family extension to fall back on, then they can be like, well, where did Patrick go? Oh, he went off that way. Let's go look for him. Let's help get him back to the group, right? Let's help get him back on track or whatever, you know? So that's where I go into, like, know who your people are. Have that to have that thing you know and that's a challenge too i mean a lot of people i think are i uh I, I see a lot of examples at least of this in my area of people that are and have been solitary practitioners for a very long time you know and they stay that way for reasons i guess you know maybe they maybe there's an anxiety maybe there's a maybe there's like well there's nothing really in the area or i don't do well in groups or or all those types of things and i go well all right but are there really not people in your area or are or the steps that needing to be taken to find people in the area not being gone through right are we not doing those things to to have that sense of community established well you will never truly know yourself unless you challenge yourself and yep. that's something you know a lot of us can be guilty of because in a perfect world again we can have nothing but sunshine and you know gumdrops it'd be great to stay and wake up every day and hey i'm in a good mood let's have a great day let's just make the best way no 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 that's not the way life works 
and for good reasons too. That sounds horrifying to me, to be honest. No, no. But just, you know, we can't appreciate love without hate. We can't appreciate heat without cold or vice versa. For all you crazy fucks who like cold, Jesse being one of those people. But, um, <laughs> hey, man, you can put more clothes on. You can only take so much off. And then Fair even enough. after. Fair enough. I'm sure the ladies can appreciate that too. But, um, <laughs> but just yeah. all the same, though, we, more importantly, though, we need messed up times to really find ourselves and test our mettle really put ourselves in those circumstances to really define ourselves and that's something i really appreciate about our path yeah probably gonna drop again but you do you need that challenge you need that uh you're still there right yeah i'm here yep we're good okay sorry but yeah you do you need that challenge you need that it's the it's nature man like it, it literally is we see it happen all the time in nature nothing stays the same for very long exactly so why are we so frustrated because that's the way life is now we well it's, it's I, think, I think it's the way that we've become programmed to think for some reason we've reached the point in our humanity that you know people just like to stay put and not be disrupted and and people don't like change it you know, kind of brings it back to my uh, my position with my job. It's easy to become complacent and content mm -hmm. with with the way things are going. It may not work in our favor, but it it's serving a purpose. But yeah, it does its thing. You know, life is the thing, and it does its thing. The Lee. To... Oh, there we go. Hey, cool. We're still here. <laughs> Eventually, though, that purpose runs out. And we're left with ourselves in that position that we're in to make the best of it. And that's all yep. we can do. So I wanna I wanna start wrapping it up, but I wanted to ask a question um to you specifically. Of course. Once you get um settled in. We're good. In 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 the in the vein of the theme of the podcast, you know? Um so with regards to change, what, what has been the most impactful or impressionable change for you, Patrick, in your life? What has been the thing, one of, you know, it didn't have to be those, this is the single most impressionable change or the single most impactful change, but what, what change has stood out for you? in your life and what was the result of that change? That's a really great question. I'm happy to answer it when I have the answer readily available. It's approached me now, but um changing my daily practices and the way I do things, especially having my Facebook group for the high lung spiritual mental awareness and support group. It's it's one thing doing my own thing, but having other people part of my group I carry a sense of responsibility and appreciation for collectively holding a standard holding you know a beacon of hope and being the person I am and in doing so I appreciate myself and my sharpness and my plights and knowing that I help other people and knowing I provide inspiration when I find it vacant and naked for me that I don't have any hope and in those times I being myself and sharing what I share, I find that support right in front of me. <laughs> I have these people, this amazing tribe that's high love, not just high love, but my family, my blessed friends who stand by me <laughs> during these messed up times to have that network of support readily available before my eyes. And it's okay to lose sight of that support network and those people. It's okay to feel that way. But back to your question, you know, I just find myself making those changes and transitions to really honor, praise myself as well as my 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 family, my tribe, my my groups that I follow to really be confronted and support during those hardships. What about you, Jesse? What's what's your answer to that question? Yeah. Yeah. 
I can't hear you. I did the thing again. I did the oh, thing yeah. where I start talking and I don't unmute <laughs> myself because um, sorry about that. But what? So answer my own question, right? <laughs> answer my own question. Uh, what has been the most impactful or the most impressionable? <laughs> excuse me, change in my life. Um, moving from New York to Tennessee almost 20 years ago. And I wasn't even a heathen at that point or pagan, you know what I mean? But I lived most of my life up to that point with in my parents' home, you know, I was not reliant on them, but it relatively speaking, it was, you know, yeah, sure, I had responsibilities, but moving out of the home, moving away, especially moving a whole, you know, 13 hours away into a different state, that was a huge change. And that was a change that really threw me into this. You got to, if you don't have it figured out, you're going to figure it out along the way. You're gonna, you have no other option. You can't rely on mom and dad and whatever, you know, to, to help with something. You've got to figure out your own stuff. That was really where, and you know, um, I, I moved away when I was in my early twenties, I was like 22 years old when I moved away. And I know a lot of people will have different things happen in their lives where they're forced to grow up and mature and be self-reliant and all this kind of stuff at, at different ages. But at that point in my life, I didn't have Jack squat figured out in my life, but I made the decision and I made the choice to relocate and to move. And then all of a sudden it was like, well, now you got to figure it out. So that was a really impactful and an impressionable moment in my life of change to take responsibility um and i made a lot of bad choices you know um but that's just it you know again looking back on the 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 moment and realizing that yeah those choices at the moment were bad choices but where am i now you don't have to find you yeah exactly where 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 am i now right because i made dumb choices back then doesn't mean that i I'm a bad person now. If anything, I learned from those bad choices, you know, and I and I learned from that experience to not repeat that same behavior. You know what I mean? And we're we're you know human beings and people. You know, there's like this propensity to, no matter how bad it gets, like some of us are a bit more hard headed, and some of us repeat the same mistakes, <laughs> no matter what. Like, why would you do that again? Don't you remember what happened last time? Kind of thing. But um, to answer the question, to answer my own question that you threw back on me, right? Like, <laughs> I was, that's probably one of the most impressionable and most impactful moments of my life was to just uproot, leave, and, and start a new life with everything against me or most things against me. I mean, my family was against me. I was literally told to my face that I'm going to fail. That was told to me. You know, you're going to fail. Okay. And did I fail along the way? Yes. We all did. Yeah, but that's part of the thing is 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 failure is is a lesson. You know what I mean? If you make a mistake, that's the opportunity to learn from it. The true failure is if you don't learn and if you just accept defeat. Exactly. If I had hit the flights and the, and the problems and the, and the issues along the way and let that be the thing that's like, yeah, man, they were right. I really did fail. Let me go crawling back and, you know. Cry all day long. No. Yeah, that wouldn't have. that the, the whole gesture, the whole thing of me leaving and going and doing what I did would have been for nothing. I I, I experienced those things throughout my youth and, and early adult years to condition and put me in a position to handle things that are going on in my life now and that's an ongoing thing you know what i mean that's an ongoing lesson the challenges the the, the suffering the all of that it's the changes that happen 
You know, you may not like it. It may suck. But hey, guess what? It's, it's happening for a reason. And yep. it's meant to put you in a position to be ready for the next stage of change. The next change that happens wherever or whenever that occurs. And when it finds you, yeah. Yeah. But, but so, yeah, man, I thought that was a really great uh, conclusion. Uh, so thanks for answering the question. And, uh, you know, Sigan, again, thank you for calling into the podcast and uh, expressing the things that you did and, and hopefully what we were able to talk about on this episode, a really long one, but uh, hopefully a good one. I love it. We were able it. to help you, you know, and all the little idiosyncrasies, the little glitches, the little things along the way. Hey, you know, if you made it this far in the podcast, um, if you made it this far, if you made it to the end, Patrick, I'm going to put you on the spot because this is this is a thing that you've done before. So yep. <laughs> if you made it this far and if you made it to the end of this podcast, comment down below with Patrick. What do you want to what do you want to what do you want to put to that? <laughs> Tell us your favorite season and why. Favorite season? Seasons kind of goes to the transitional period that we're discussing right now and why it's important. Some people might find winter appropriate. It's time to die spiritually or whatever you choose. Not physically, obviously, but, you know, or some people might say, you know, summer because you're live, you're flourishing, you're doing your very best or fall. You know, your time, to, you know, relax, adjust and assimilate what's going on. Some people may be spring like me. I'm more towards fall and spring those transitional periods like you know the ones more positive and whatnot but also you know i love spring because you know everything's being blossoming it's starting mm. over again but then the other side fall i love fall because more importantly the temperature is more cool just like spring but also the yeah. autumn leaves and more importantly though is i feel like the veil between the sacred spirit and ourselves is most thin and right. more importantly, for those of the Norse pagan community, we have the holy tides that are fast approaching us. You know, winter nights, Yule, you know, just that's that's the peak period of my experience personally, just to have that, that, that communion, that availability to really, again, those messed up times. Winter, in my opinion, is a very hard time, especially Christmas. For all Norse pagans, they're pagans. You know, we... We're celebrating and venerating all the same, but not for the same reasons. Mm -hmm. Me personally, I celebrate that because, you know, I'm with my family and I'm very grateful to be in the position to be thankful of my family and the traditions that have left me up to this point. But again, you know, it, it's all how you see it. But yeah, the yeah, ultimate yeah. question, what's your favorite season and why? And thank you so much for lasting this long. I know a few people who will be here, but, um, Anyone yeah. who's watching, thank you. We appreciate you. We do. And it's been a great show. So thank you for coming back on here and, and being a, a really fun guest and, and my friend and, and just contributing so much to this. It's been it's been great. I appreciate you. And thank, thank you, you for you offering the, the, the idea, the concept, like the, 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 the topic for this week. Like this kid this is this is from Patrick, guys. Like <clears throat> the Miraketi, Miraseti, you know, Mira's music video. You know, Patrick wanted to talk about this, and I thought, well, yeah, let's expound upon it. Let's 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 go places with it. Let's talk about some things, and then Sigan calling in, and then talking about what she did. Like it kind of all wraps up into a nice little bundle of embracing change. And I want to thank you, Jesse, for making that reaction video. Like we said previously to this podcast, like I told you for like over half an hour, I'm like Jesse, this is it. This and it's perfect. I'm like the whole time, like <laughs> it's so refreshing to have someone to really reciprocate and understand the position of passion and understand that we share. And that kind of ties into what we're talking about and the paths that we follow. You know, this just having someone, whether it be, you know, a close friend that you've known since, you know, the early stages or someone who you just met recently who shares the similar plights and victories, you know, that's what that's all about. Forget, no, don't forget the hardships because they play a role, but more importantly, give attention to those and what makes you hopeful and happy. Because we couldn't be more, we couldn't be the person and people we are today without both the hardships 
and the victories that we share. Absolutely. It's all part of shaping us, you know? It's all part of it. Um, so thank you, everybody, for, for tuning in and, and watching this episode this week. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Midgard Musings. Check out Patrick's Pylon group. That's going to be uh, linked down in the show notes and description of this video. Sigan especially, um, if you're looking for a, a, an anonymous safe space and you just want to vent or whatever, um, it's there, and we would welcome you there. Um, so definitely be sure to check all of the information that's annotated down in the description or over here in the show notes, wherever it is that you're capturing this podcast. Thank you to Patrick again for coming on here this week and being an honored guest as always. And for everybody else that is listening and watching this week, thank you for your ongoing and constant support. May the gods continue to notice you and may your ancestors smile upon you. We'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.